Hauls, it is Connor and I am finally doing another wrap up. I said in my last one to do this for every 10 books I read just to get a bit organized here. I couldn't do it monthly, I said, because um, my reading has been really rocky this year. So like at the beginning I was like, oh, I, I missed the mark for doing it at the end of January. So like, I'll just do it at 10 and I was like in the middle of February. And then shit got worse. I just, this has been such a bad reading year for me. I don't know. I just haven't been able to read a lot. Like, life shit going on, mental shit going on. Yo, you want a video about how to read when you have depression and mental illnesses? Let me know. Um, I got all the tips for you. So, I finally have 10 other books to read. These are 11 through 20. Sorry, because, like, I've read a lot of these, like, mid-February and shit. The majority of them, like, half of them are, like, at the end of February. So, if I mind thoughts aren't the clearest on them i'm sorry i'll show you my like reading because i do how like everyone all the booktubers do inspired by lala from books and lala how she does her page tracker and like reading tracker let me show you my reading for this year and just it's so bad so like this was january the first 10 days don't read right and then like oh, okay you know whatever i read however many books i read here was february people were like wow you're, you're doing good you you you're all right there and then comes march I literally didn't read for like over a month straight. Like there's all these like missing here, but like for a month straight, like here until like um April, a bitch just wasn't reading. And then like here is freaking April. Do you, do you see? I read one book in April, I think, or like half of a book in April. Now we're in May. It just started, or whatever. See, I'm kind of trying to do it or whatever. It's just been rough. Also. How many of you guys are into journaling? You want me to fucking do a flip through of this boy? I love watching journal flip throughs. My favorite. I'm stalling, aren't I? Anyway, the ten books I have read. The first one I'm going to talk about is Sun Dog by Stephen King. This is one of his short stories. I gave it one star. It's like just under 200 pages. This all I remember is about like a Polaroid that was like not haunted, but something was going on. It tied back into Cujo, which like is not even a cool thing to say about his books. Like it can't give it like a cool something because all of his books. Oh, like interlock in some way a lot of the time because they're always all set in the exact same fucking place I did not like this one it was just so like uh and then like at the I hated how at the end it was like it's gonna like something start over I just don't know I don't remember a lot I remember not liking it I remember you know what I'm gonna say I love Stephen King when he writes young teen boys I think he writes young teen boys the best and this was like a younger teen boy I hated the way he was written I hated his personality I hated everything about him. I hated all the things he does the thing again where it turns into like such vulgar and like softcore porn for no reason he doesn't add anything to the story i just thought it was awful um there's that <laughs> this, um is the devil crept in by anil Alburn. um this is a book that my mom loves this author she had two they had like they had lost two of the books when they were sending them to her so then they sent resent her them but then she ended up getting the originals and then i have both of them i talked about the other one at some point i think i read it last year i don't know maybe i fuck if i know i gave it a two star I don't remember, I know what it's about, how do I talk about it? A boy and then his like cousin goes missing in the woods and then he comes back and then he's kind of off and then you get the backstory about this lady who births like a devil creature who eats animals and then they lures animals back in and it's just weird. The backstory is really interesting but it, it kind of got a little, eh, it was a little annoying to read, I didn't really care. Uh, like I don't know like I've read two of her books now and I've given both of them like two stars I think and I can't and like for various reasons the other one just made me like oh maybe uncomfortable but not in a good way like not in a way that books like are supposed to make you uncomfortable or whatever I don't know I didn't like it this one I just uh, like it's I don't know I just kind of missed the mark for me I didn't care at the end the end pissed me off because like it's starting all over again I hate when that happens like why why i just i don't know my mom really liked it though i don't i know i'm not saying much i don't know the next one is a five star read and it is persepolis by i'm so sorry i don't want to say her name wrong i really don't i'm not even going to try because i just don't want to mispronounce anything i don't know if they say um letters differently in her language i don't know again i can 100 tell you i fucking loved it it was very mm, um you know why I love this one? Because it is a graphic memoir. Graphic memoirs are amazing, phenomenal. I love the way they're told. I think they're able to tell a lot through pictures and shit. It's beautiful. What I loved about this, I loved how like endearing our main character was. I loved her struggles. 
I, I mean, you don't love when someone struggles, but I liked hearing about her struggles, how she dealt with them, and then, like, the bad ways she dealt with them. How she, like, feeling like a stranger in her own country because other people have different views than you, and, like, you don't agree with certain things, but then feeling like a stranger in a different country because you don't look like everybody else and you want to assimilate and all this shit. I understood that. Um, what I loved the most, though, was because she grew up in revolutionary Iran, and, like, so, like, the revolution's happening and all this shit. There was so much history tied into this and into her life and the historical aspects getting from somebody like straight from the point of view because the thing is like we obviously like she's talking about a lot of things that you hear and you know of like especially living in america but you have such a skewed viewpoint like 9 11 you see it from like an american lens when you're young you're taught a certain way and like you're always seeing it in a specific view lens and then you're seeing everybody who was there who was living during all this stuff and like you see how she in her country and all this stuff and things like that and i love getting that viewpoint i love the, the historic element is what sold this to me like i think like how do you judge someone's life experiences i know whatever it's like it's just because it wasn't enjoyable for you like this is someone's life but i think 100 percent. like i'm not saying that this wouldn't have been a five star but 100 percent got me there it was like it, all the stars that history elements thrown in here learning about her religion and her viewpoint on like faith and god and stuff that was so interesting too i love when books talk about stuff like that so this was a five star phenomenal next is horns by joe hill i gave this a three star joe hill i started reading his books last year two last year and i just like fell in love with him originally i wanted to read him because i was like reading more stephen king and i've always like loved stephen king looked up stephen king and i was like i wonder what all the hubbub is about with his son he has multiple sons here right joe hill is the one that i'm like that's that's the one i want um this is three star i actually really i love it right it's very engaging everyone knows Hill. this is the most popular one this is the one that got turned into a movie i believe with daniel radcliffe that's the one right it's good um it's not perfect for sure like not my new favorite joe hill for dang sure um i love his writing it's very engaging it's very easy to get into if you have seen the movie hereditary and it, at the end and all this time it starts going into like this weird like thing about like religion and like idol tree and like it, faith like weird shit like that that's what this kind of took a turn at the end i love that because like it's based about a man who gets horns and then he can like read people's minds and then it's like he like goes into the devil like form and then it's like also him and like because like his like girlfriend died or they pinned it on him and all this like she was murdered and all this shit and then he's like figuring that out i there were so many elements here that i loved i don't know i just it, it wasn't great i really enjoyed a lot of it um he did a thing that his father does a lot i hate comparing the two but i feel like that's the best way for me and maybe for other people who like one or the other or something where it became again very like like it turned into like vulgarness and like i don't know why everything has to be tied back to sex like it's just not like that's not interesting to read like it, this would have been so much better if it was like oh my god this dude been the devil can read minds and what does this mean about him and all stuff but it's like inhumanity but it just oh, always goes back to like sex and that just like ugh irked me a lot it was good a little bit was like eh, a little some of it felt a little cheesy i get it but like it was it was pretty good it was it was all right i read Reread, I should say, Animal Farm by George Orwell. Again, I gave it a five stars. I've given it a five stars every time I read it. I think it's so genius. It's simple. There's so much packed into like such short of a novel or whatever. Um, obviously, I love the allegorical. Is allegorical? I'm just trying to sound smart now, aren't I? Um, I like that it's an allegory for the Russian Revolution. I also think that even if you don't have any backstory on the Russian Revolution, you can still enjoy it. I just think it's a great thing. I just love George Orwell. Next is a disappointing one. This is kind of an epic love story by Erin Callender. Ah, yeah, it's a two star. It is queer POC rep, and I wanted to give this all the stars. I want. I wish I could have loved this so much more but i couldn't i just couldn't i wanted to give it more stars just for the representation but it was awful like it got like it was a one star read and then i gave it the extra star just for the representation and like that's the, i still want to read more by kelly calendar because again it was own voices queer poc rep and like i'm intrigued to see what else they have to offer but let well, i'm sorry i read this in february so i might not have the clearest or maybe it was march i don't remember when i read this i read this a while ago so i don't have the clearest memories and thoughts i wish i wrote reviews or like typed them in goodreads but i don't because i'm lazy basically this was supposed to be about like boys who are best friends when they were kids 
one moves away and they have a falling out and then he comes back and then they're supposed to like figure out why they fell apart and then like it becomes like a romance sort of thing and oh man I am a sucker for the childhood friends to lovers trope childhood friends to enemies to lovers like all of that I am the biggest the oh that is my weakness I will I love them like I want to like a story I'm currently like thinking of writing is a childhood friends to lover story those are my favorite but this was not done well it was like the boy comes back in and you don't like you understand why they like fell out why they stopped talking but there was no like hump to get over it was just like hey man you're back yeah then they just become friends again and then they like fall in love and all this shit it just wasn't like there was you there was no build up to something like I was expecting something and then like them to get over this and it's like here's the climax you just weren't it was very anticlimactic it wasn't leading to anything there was a lot of cheating in here that wasn't called for because like the the main boy had dated his like best friend and then they broke up and then they were still like BFFs but then like and then the other boy had like a boyfriend like in his other town when he moved away and everyone there was a lot of just low key cheating that was just like glossed over that it was just like it made it sound like it was okay and that's not okay i hate that i hate that there were no consequences for these for the that oh like i'm getting angry thinking about it like that just pissed me off they read they were like juniors or something and then they read so like the most annoying teenagers their voices having to read these characters and what they were saying was so fucking annoying the way they dealt with the show was so annoying it just was very juvenile. I didn't like it. Mm, not good. I mm, like the redeeming quality would be that they were it was queer, pure super. A lot of that too. A lot of different sexualities, identities, uh, races thrown in here. So I'm very, very, very like I'm still inclined to pick up anything else they write because I want I'd love to see more of this representation. You have to give voices like this the stage that they need to write more because this again it was a debut book for them, and not all debuts were gonna be great and hit the mark. But I am very intrigued to see what else they can come up with because like it had the it, it had the foundation to be good. It just didn't do it next is a book that i have an entire vlog about my reading experience with it and stuff it's called um reading my book to be favorite book and that book is life as we knew it by susan beth pfeffer and this is a post-apocalyptic dystopian novel following a teen girl and her family after a meteor hits them close to earth and everything is fucked up tides and weather and shit is fucked because of this and i am not a fan of post-apocalyptic dystopian stories i can count how many of those I enjoy with one hand probably like two sorry cry about it I just don't like them this I genuinely enjoy I think I gave it a 3.5 I think I gave it a 3.5 I'm I don't remember my good reads here but it doesn't tell me my actual rating it just says the story. I think I gave it a 3.5 anyway um I really really enjoyed it I have more thoughts and like some reason shit on it in that vlog but basically um my biggest things were the character read a little young and the writing wasn't the greatest um but i loved how we got a backstory to why the world is why it is i think that's a lot of the reason why i can't care because i don't like you just oh no we're here and like even if you learn about it it's like i just don't care um we got some backstory we know exactly why the world is why it is now i love that i loved how domestic it felt all these characters felt very real they felt like real people they felt like a real family and the struggles and the inner struggles that everybody's going through felt real i liked when it touched on religion a little bit i liked the way they dealt with that it wasn't too cheesy it wasn't too over the top it wasn't too preachy it was it was done very well um i liked how real it was i guess is the whole thing also like the like what is going on here like i'm like it's gonna be our world because we are treating our earth like shit can you please care more about where we are living please because I'm, I'm not a meteor ain't gonna hit the moon close to earth but our like, our earth is getting fucked up on its own we don't need a meteor because we are the meteor like please care about the environment and the world before we end up like this yeah so i think that made it more enjoyable because i'm like that shit could happen. Next is a, another reread, and that is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King. This is, um, oh, I gave this, like, four stars, which I'm gonna get into. Um, 
This is about a young girl, how old is she, nine? Is she nine? Who gets separated from her family while they're hiking in the woods and then she gets lost in the woods and she's in there for a few days and it's terrifying and all this shit. I always say, because one, this was the first ever Stephen King book I read in the seventh grade, I always say this is my favorite Stephen King and I always say this is his scariest book I have ever read, a scary story I've ever encountered from like the books I've read, the stories I've read, and the movies of his and Adam Hazen I've watched because it's not like, ooh, like scary clown or vampires or paranormal shit. It is scary because it is real life. Like this could happen to anybody. You just wander off or you step off course and you're lost and you're gone and you might die out in the woods and there's like a bear chase, you know, which isn't scary. The scary thing is, oh my God, you're lost and you're all alone and you're young and you're inexperienced, you don't know what to do. Like that's what makes it scary. Um, what made me, um, kind of wary about rereading this was the fact that I'm like, this is my favorite. What if I don't love it as much as I thought I did or did before? I think before it was like a five star. It's not a five star read. I am obviously older. I've read a lot more books. I've read a lot more Stephen King so I can judge things differently. Uh, I, I don't know. This is still my favorite. I don't know. I still hold by it being like, um his scariest I guess I mean I don't get scared but I'm just saying if like in a in any situation this is the one that I would not want to be in because like clowns and vampires like that shit ain't fucking real and, like a clown it's a clown like that's not scary like I don't know like this is his most realistic one that makes it the scariest okay um I think for it being very short and it being like something that feels quick paced and it's easy to get through but then I feel like a lot of it is unnecessary and it kind of a little bit dragged and, I don't know it's good though I would recommend this out of a lot of his other things I've read, so. Second to last, again, I have a whole other vlog about this. I think I talked about the, that in a vlog, too. I have a vlog where I read this thing, and it was all my thoughts and everything on it. It was my last video, I think. And that is Persuasion by Jane Austen, my first ever Jane Austen novel. What is this about? I don't know. I gave it a two-star. It wasn't that great. It was nothing special. I don't see the hype around her. It was... It was like any other classic from the 1800s. It didn't have anything special. It was dumb. Everybody fit into a dumb trope from that era. Mm, was it romantic? No, because the love interest and the main girl don't talk at all for like fucking 125 pages in. It's uh, nothing. It just is nothing special. Sorry. If this, I know people love her and swear by her. I don't get it. I will never get it. Maybe I just read another one of her books. Haley told me that everything I said about this book is exactly as she felt about Pride and Prejudice. So I'm like, okay, yeah, she's nothing special. Then I don't have to read the rest of her book. I have one more of her books that I will read because I own it. But like, she ain't that great. Why do y'all love her so much? It's like, I can, I didn't get anything new. It wasn't crazy and romantic. Sorry. And number 20, the final book. The probably my favorite out of all of these. I finally, finally read the white book by Hong Kong. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful book. It is basically a book told through various white objects and like, not tangible objects, thoughts. I don't even know how to explain it. I love this so much. It is very short. It's like 160 pages maybe. And it's like little like short passages like this about like a white item. I dog-eared the hell out of it. I highlighted so much. It was so beautiful in like a haunting way because the underlying theme of it all is that she's writing to about her older sister who died like two hours into her birth and shit. And oh my God, it's like painfully beautiful in a way because when you think about white, you think purity, you think innocence and beauty and like sterile and just like pristine. You're thinking like good positive thoughts with white like in dark and like the darker colors and like black are like the opposite the bad and so like that's like a theme in here where it's like she's trying to be like innocent and see the lens through like the eyes of her sister who would see it in a very innocent way because she only lived like two hours and so she's trying to re-see things in that lens but she can't because she's already seen so much of the world and she knows that it's not all beautiful and pristine and white. And I think that kind of shows more towards the end and stuff where she's like, you can destroy something and try to rebuild, but the foundation is still there. And oh, she has such a way with words where she could be writing about the most awful 
terrible things but they sound so beautiful and you're like am i reading poetry like am i reading a sonnet by shakespeare that's like a love letter but you're like no you're writing about like destruction and death and shit and it's just oh it's so beautiful and i just i loved it because white is a simple color and it's just a simple book but it's like sticks with you and it's very like haunting but beautiful and it's so good I swear by Hong Kong. I have read her other two novels that have been translated into English, um, The Vegetarian and Human Acts. I think I like Human Acts a little bit more than The Vegetarian, but it's it, it follows that same thing where she'll, everything she writes is so beautiful. Her word choice and just the, uh, it's so good. Even when she's writing about awful, like scary, not good things, it's so good. I don't know how she does it. I uh, love her, swear by her, so good. Guys, that is the, 11 through 20 books that I have read this year. I am hopefully going to be reading at a lot quicker of pace at my normal pace. Life's just been hard. It's been hard to read. You know, you know, this, it's just life. Right now I'm currently reading 20th Century Ghost by Joe Hill. That's his short story collection. I'm in the middle of that. I usually don't read short story collections, but I love Joe Hill. I want to read everything he ever writes. And I am loving it so far. Again, I'm like 150 pages in. So good. He has such a way with words. Oh, that man. I love him. So, uh, tell me if you read any things, tell me your thoughts, tell me anything, talk to me, please. Bye-bye.